Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and talk about all the cool things going on in Linux, Floss, Penguins, open source, and uh, I don't know, Joe, what else is there, man? Oh, boy. <laughs> a lot. Even even during the holidays, we had, have quite a few stories to tell. Can't stop and... open source, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yes, yes, that's awesome. And I had fun filling in for Pedro on Linux Gamecast Weekly this last Saturday. That was so much fun. Oh, <laughs> I got you did? to throw chairs. Yeah. Oh, man. How'd that go? <laughs> I haven't had a chance to watch it. <laughs> it went very well. All it right. went very good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, if you've been following me on social media yesterday morning, <laughs> nice surprise. Uh, my, my fancy mm -hmm. business internet, uh, my upload speed. If I was really patient and got 16 streams, I, I could get six megabits up. Ah, uh, six oh boy. megabits up. Megabits. Like, oh, um, like that. That's not good. So I got on the phone with Spectrum. To their credit, mm -hmm. they, they sent out the people and we got everything sorted and done. And we were, for the most part, uh, we're good. Hopefully. Now that I've said that, everything's <laughs> going to catch on fire, Jill, aren't you excited? <laughs> Don't you like to start yes. like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. All right, let's get right into it. Um, what do we got right here from Beta yes. News? Something. <laughs> ho, 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 Mary. Look at that horrible, terrifying <laughs> penguin. This is from Brian. Brian writes, visiting family for Christmas, question mark. Replace Windows 10 on their computer with Peppermint OS 9. Respin Linux. Mm -hmm distro and it reads like <laughs> one might expect and mm -hmm. i just want to say to everyone listening at home um <laughs> i know you didn't sound in my voice one of you did it didn't you yeah uh-huh yeah yeah you did don't don't try to cover it up i know you you went to your parents house or you went to uncles or wherever and you're like oh i don't like windows well here have some linux and you pff, you houdini'd out you're gone. Never to be heard of again. People, mm -hmm. don't ever do that. I mean, unless you are level one tech support for that family member, don't do it. Like, here, here's the idea. This was my clever plan way back when, Jill. So they have the Mac. Yeah. The last time, not the ones with the squiggly draw bars on the Macs, but the ones before that, like the first generation Air. And I bought two uh, of those yes. and I bought a Mac Pro. I gave those to family members, mostly my sister and her kids, because I got tired of doing Windows tech support because I really am disconnected. <laughs> I was like, here, I'll Google that for you. Gave that. Everyone was happy. Everyone was ecstatic about their shiny aluminum pieces of I don't know. <laughs> Three months later, you get the call. Ring, 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 ring. I'm like, oh, yeah, what? You're like, well, I don't understand what this bouncy thing is. You know, then you get to say the best thing in the world. I've never owned a Mac and I have no idea how to work on them. Take it to the Apple store. Yeah. Peace out. <laughs> That's a good way to solve that problem. <laughs> it was a very expensive way to do it, but it worked. They stuck with it. Yeah. So uh, I know that's kind of a horrible thing to do. But anyway, anyway, back to it. If you're yeah. wondering, Peppermint Linux OS, it's a cloud-centric OS based on Ubuntu. It's derivative of Ubuntu. Uh, and it works with the LXDE desktop. Yes. Which is a thing. <laughs> and I'm just going to say this, because there's like 200 comments on this story. And if you read those... Mm -hmm. uh, the general theme is what I just said. Don't do that. Not because, <laughs> I mean, spreading Linux cheer, it's an awesome thing, but this can be very dangerous. I, I could see like maybe grandpa, grandma, and they're like, my internet computer appliance box <laughs> that I checked the one thing, put Linux on that. That's great. But if they're trying to do multiple things, I don't know, maybe not. But if you do, am I crazy with this, Jill? I'm yeah. thinking, yeah. put something mm -hmm. Nothing against Peppermint OS. I've never used it, but I have yeah. nothing. It has not personally attacked me yet. Uh, yeah. But if I'm going to put something on somebody's box, I'm not just thinking about me. I'm thinking about the next person that has to deal with it. So I'm boring mainstream stuff like Debian, Fedora, maybe Ubuntu. And I was like, <laughs> what about Suzy? Suzy is not really good for the desktop. And yeah. uh, anybody using it on the desktop will tell you that, but they still love it anyway. So you need to shut up. Uh, yes. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? I've, I've oh, said too much. Oh, 
no, 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 that, that was, that was perfect. Actually, I did this to my, my Steve husband, uh, uh, quite a few years ago and, and I, I switched him from windows to Ubuntu and he's fine. <laughs> so, <laughs> but he's a unique use case. <laughs> so <laughs> he just mostly surfs the net and whatnot. Uh, but, um, anyways, Peppermint OS has actually been always been one of my favorite Ubuntu based distros. And as Ben says, is great for noobs. And the latest release, Peppermint OS 9 Respin, based on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, is no different. And it comes with both 32-bit ISOs for older machines and 64-bit ones. And the wonderful thing, actually, about Peppermint OS, and one of the reasons why I like to recommend it also for, for getting new people into Linux, is because it has excellent user support. So, And it's a really clean, beautiful um, desktop. It, it combines elements of... LXDE and XFCE and FVWM and one desktop. <laughs> so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's very lightweight and works beautifully. Have you ever, like, do you know somebody, like a family member you don't like and just, like, put, I don't know, like Antargos on there and, like, deal with that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of maybe something to shy away with. Um, don't put the new hotness, the new fun stuff. They're not going to have a good time by looking at Yes, that don't up. put Gen 2 on there either. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> probably not a good idea. But yeah. <laughs> since we're talking about putting Linux on things, something, even if you're like, I'm just watching this show no. because I enjoy people, I don't know anything about Linux, you're probably running Linux. And the most common device for a lot of yes. us outside of our mobile device is going to be our routers and they get problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And what's what's true and what's sad about this, this article had stated, most home routers lack simple Linux OS hardening security. And that's the, that's actually really, really depressing. Yes, just because it has Linux on it doesn't do, and, and Linux is secure itself, but but back when when the Linux uh, was created for that firmware, uh, security wasn't as an important issue. So it's it's there's not necessarily the mindset for hardened security with Linux with the older versions on our routers. And which which definitely is a problem. And, you know, we've talked about in the past uh, about Germany, uh, Germany's recent proposed router security guidelines. And I really, really feel that the whole world should adopt that. <laughs> it's, it's so, you know, we could have more hardened security on our firmware on our routers. Yeah. And but, it's, yeah, really important. No, one of the things I'm looking at, I mean, this is from uh, Naked Security, Giggity. Uh, all this is going to be in our show notes. Uh, CITL Labs, they tested routers and Basically, everyone mm -hmm. has covered Asus, D-Link, Linksys, Netgear, Synology, TP-Link, TrendNet. I mean, everything I think of. And most of them are lacking ASLR, DEP, or I want to always call it RERO, but it's rel -row. Um yeah. I know that's acronym <laughs> soup. Like, what is all this? Yes. I'm not looking up. Oversimplified. <laughs> They're all memory exploits, and pretty much all of the mm -hmm. routers have issues. But... Um, I think very basic hygiene is something I checked last week. And when was the last time you checked it, logged into your router and see if there was a firmware update available or going to the manufacturer's website and checking that. I know I'm guilty of not doing that for all of my routers that are not running DDWRT. And to that, if it's at all possible, because, you know, you remember way back when, Jill, I found it. I yeah. still I, I still have the <laughs> internet, according to South Park, that original Linksys router with one yes. Ethernet port on the back of it. Uh-huh. That's all it yeah. could do, but it could route, baby. And yeah. <laughs> you're stuck with that. But uh, they're commodity devices now. I mean, if you spend $150 on a router, you're getting a not it's gonna look like a mutated spider with all the antennae and yeah. all that. But I'm gonna say <laughs> yes. you're gonna buy one. Now, see if you can find one. Do your best to find one that has support for either DDWRT, Kong, Tomato, or something like that. And yeah. even better, you can buy them even from Linksys. You can get them with DDWRT already. Exactly. In, yeah, under the yeah. hood. I think that's mm -hmm. a good idea. Do you got any additional thoughts on this one? Oh, yeah. Just just make sure you get a router that you can, like Vince says, you can put DDWRT or, or um, any of the other uh, hardened Linux firmwares. 
Indeed. Very important. Oh, yeah. or you could do what I used to do uh, <laughs> when I was in university and I, I was absolutely the poorest. I repurposed to 486. Used oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I've done that, too. And mm -hmm. I, I put several Ethernet cards in it. I even had 1486 with a couple ISA Ethernet cards in it. it 10 does the megabits, job just fine. man, screaming. <laughs> I mean, thinking yeah. it's like, oh, 100 <laughs> megabits. Who's ever going to use that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we got a new video editor. It's nonlinear. It's fancy and it's from the future. Yes, yes, yes. So this is all of a new nonlinear been released for for Linux. And I was really, really impressed with this piece of software. Um, it's it, honestly, this is a, an incredible achievement for, for being alpha software with only a year of a development and it has very little crashing. And actually it reminds me a lot of one of my favorite nonlinear editors, Flowblade, um, in its workflow and appearance and kind of, you know, in its look and feel and simplicity. And, uh, um, it's, it's it's amazing to see a video editor, you know, this sophisticated come out in in a year and and be fairly stable <laughs> and work well. So that was definitely, you know, that was this was an actually an exciting news story because we we need more of these pieces of software on Linux well, and they, more development on them. <laughs> kind of do a good job of breaking it down, you know, with the good, you know, uh, mm -hmm. shortcuts, editing, all that's thrown together, and yes. I have some issues mm -hmm. with the markers and the ugly with the proxies, thumbnails for video clips, yeah. uh, FX rendering, a no. couple of things that are good, a couple of things that are bad, but yeah. you, you, you know what, Jill? <laughs> you know what? What, what, what? I wouldn't know because uh, I found out something. It was available as a <laughs> snap, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, well, you're about to hate on snaps and you'd be correct. Uh, however... I always, I try it because I'm like, it, it's going to get there. I know it's going to be a thing. So I tried it, downloaded yes. it and installed the snap. <laughs> Not a problem. It launched. I was like, oh, good on you, snap. I mean, it pulled everything it needed to. It was great. I couldn't load my media drives. I, I have Crunch yeah. and I have Steamy. If you've <laughs> ever seen my desktop, which I'm sure you have, <laughs> if you follow me anywhere, and those drives weren't anywhere. I was like, wait, that's right. Okay. Did. Well, let me go to the mount points. Let's go to media. And nope, not there either. Curious. And Atomic, uh, one of our glorious, hot, sexy executive producers, writes uh, in the show notes. <laughs> yes. He's like, this is a product <laughs> of the security confinement of Snap. Presently, yes. the workaround is uh, mm -hmm. install in classic mode. Snap install all of other classic. Well, to that, allow me to retort. Um <laughs> Pseudo snap, <laughs> remove all of editor. Yeah. <laughs> if, 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 if anyone's wondering what happened next, I was like, I, I can't get to any of my media and I'm not copying a 75 Aww. gigabyte file over to my NVMe drive and burning those cycles to test this. Get that fixed. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I just installed it directly <laughs> in 1804. So to play around with it. <laughs> I, I'm tr trying to test the future and it's kicking me in the face every time I do. It's yeah. brilliant. I love it. Okay. Photo Flare, a simple, powerful photo editor. Yeah. Arthur Aaron sent this in here yes. in chat right now. This is an effort to bring quick, simple, but powerful imaging editing to the masses. It's inspired by image editor currently available on Windows. Ooh, don't, don't, don't mm -hmm. lead with that. Just don't lead with that. Mm -hmm. I tried mm -hmm. this. I downloaded it. I'm going to be honest. I, I don't art very well. I can art if need be, but it's not something I typically like to do. Um, it is built with a C++ 11 QT5. It's tight. It looks sleek. Completely cross-platform. There's no issues there. No. Um, it's inspired from photo filter, whatever that is. Basically, here's my takeaway from it, and correct me if I'm right. It, it's Microsoft Paint. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's where Photo Filter was inspired by Microsoft That's what I was about to ask. Yeah. I was like, is that yeah. what they call Microsoft Paint in Windows now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I think this is actually cool because it has a lot of the functionality that is much more modern looking than one of my favorite classic image editors for Linux, which was MT Paint. 
that was one of my favorite utilities outside of GIMP for doing, you know, quick touch-ups and conversions. And this is actually very, very, ha has a lot of the same functionality. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's very powerful. And actually, uh, they do more than, than of course, <laughs> the original uh, uh, paint for Windows. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it, it looks pretty sleek. Mm -hmm. I don't mind it. One thing I was curious about is they have a buy button. And I go to the buy button, and it's sold out digital. Mm. Merchandise does not work that way. Um, but apparently when it's not sold out, you can unlock the fully featured version, which, okay, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. try it. <laughs> I, I guess, I don't know. There, I know there's a couple like very basic, like tux paint. I was going to say use this for kids, but use tux paint for kids. Yeah. I don't know. Actually, tux paint is an excellent utility. I, I do use it, you know, just for myself because it's <laughs> it's cute and it's fun and it works. Jill's just like, what do you mean for kids? What do you imply? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Okay, a little yeah. bit of news. Um, Android-ish, Google-ish, yeah. the evil. Yay. You know, you get old enough for the people to hate you, such as Google. <laughs> Remember when they were new and everyone loved them? Yeah. <laughs> Chrome OS camera app is now open source. This is kind of neat. Yes. Um, this is kind of yeah, coming out of that because Chrome OS will start using the Android camera app. That's the thing. That's going to happen. Kiss it goodbye. However, there's a good chance because if your Chromebook doesn't have Android Pie, you're still using the Chrome app. And hey, if you're still doing that, you can take a look under the hood. Then you can install open camera like a normal person should. And that rhymed. Mm -hmm. Hey, check out, check out Dr. Seuss Vin. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what's interesting. It's taken until this year for Google, Google to implement video recording into this app. It's time to open source the Chrome OS camera app. Um, if it's taken them that long, just to inc include video support. And so Google knows this, so they're putting it out to the, the community. And I think also, it's something better. Here's uh, the thing, though. You, know, you think it's ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just yeah. went through this. Yeah. And if I take a picture of my tablet, because I always get a tablet. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. oh, I can't believe you're taking a picture with your tablet. You know who? I get to mock the people who take pictures <laughs> with their Chromebook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> Not something I look yeah. for in a laptop. Oh, and, and yeah, the article goes on to stay. Another reason why um, they're open sourcing it is that image reprocessing effects like portrait mode cannot be done in house. Uh, so open sourcing it will allow the community to implement these functions much, much quicker. Mm. And that will be cool. And actually on my Chrome, Chrome OS uh, um, laptop, I've, I've mostly used Hangouts. <laughs> so... <laughs> But that's a thing too. But it's it hangouts. It's not going to be around probably much longer. <laughs> and they'll kill it. Give it a minute. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, check this out. What are you hippies up to in California? <laughs> oh boy, boy. Actually, this is really exciting news. This is probably the biggest piece of news uh, this this last week. Uh, the California Government Operations Agency last week launched a new website that will eventually host the state's open source software projects allowing agencies, the technology industry, and citizens to collaborate on the development of software used by the state government. Ah, oh, amazing! Finally, we're going to get some open source initiatives here in California. Thank God. And this is awesome. I just, hang on, this, i, I got to jump is, in. Whoever did this yeah. site, and ha, uh, did the yeah. CSS to cause the highlighting to be a slightly darker shade of yes. white? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Annoying. This <laughs> Annoying. is what you get when you legalize marijuana. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah no, very true. <laughs> so this is very awesome. And this is the first step in implementing open source in California's government averse, overspending, overtaxation, and the proprietary stronghold. And yeah, I, I know the, a little bit about this because I work, I work for a community college as a community college instructor and am paid by the California government. <laughs> So I've been dealing with this for almost 30 years. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's ridiculous. You know, it's taken this long because California economy ranks fifth in the world and it's 
you know, ridiculous that NASA and SpaceX use, use, SpaceX use open source software to go to space, but our own government doesn't here on Earth. So, <laughs> so it's, a, it's just so important. And as we talked about with Canada's new IT directive that mandates the use of open source software two weeks ago, all governments and schools should be using open source software for greater transparency, as well as less money spent for taxpayers and greater security. So I, I was just, I'm so excited about this. This is the first step. <laughs> Don't be silly. It's going to be more difficult to hide embezzlement. Government doesn't like yeah. those things. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure we can find a good Microsoft solution to this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that means, oh, that means my, my school can get rid of Windows Server soon and finally start using Linux. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be haunted by the ghost of Balmer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so uh, that was really important. Two last things before mm -hmm. we get out of here. Uh, Flossing 2018. Why 2018 mm -hmm. was a breakout year for open source deals. A lot of that, it's kind of, this article basically focuses on, you know, IBM buying Red Hat and Microsoft yoinking GitHub. Mm -hmm. Everyone was happy about both of those unanimously <laughs> on the internet, no issues there whatsoever. And they point out, you know, something very factual. Most IT, if not all, either run completely on open source or large parts of their projects do. And it gives a bit of a mention to some of the challenges that people are facing when, well, let me start out by saying some of the dangers yeah. that we've seen with mm -hmm. very popular projects that are used everywhere, yes. but completely un underfunded. And sometimes that directly results in that project not being maintained when you're dealing yes. with things like uh, uh, OpenSSL that happened. And yeah. that mm -hmm. was an issue. And then we had that Bash. That was huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, directly affected things. Yeah. But it also mentions, you know, a couple of different ideas, you know, people using the Red Hat, they call the Red Hat strategy of monetizing open source, which is, you know, becoming a services and supporting it and other ideas of how to monetize projects that, you know, mm -hmm. are run, which can be very difficult when you're not out to necessarily make a profit, just paying the yeah. bills. It can be a very dodgy thing to do like we couldn't do this show right now if it wasn't for everyone exactly. watching and we have patreon and you know we're not trying to get rich but we're just trying to get i couldn't imagine you know you can't it's weird mm. when what i'm saying is like a side project or a hobby turns into like a yeah a big <laughs> thing yes <laughs> a network <laughs> we are a network <laughs> so yeah um uh definitely this is uh you know something that that we we truly need and in fact the article says the past year underscored just how big open source won yay you know we're king of the server space we're king of the internet of things and and of the cloud but 2018 also showed that open source still has some growing up to do and yeah as, as ben says this is very very true and as we discussed before, in big business environments where the utmost security is needed, small independent developer code should not be used unless it is verified and supported, such as was the case with the recent Bitcoin wallet malware that we've been talking about. Malware? So, you know, there's, yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that the kind of mal malware you get at the malls? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> when was the last time you've been to a mall? Uh, just recently for Christmas, because really? I have one within walking di distance of my house. Ah, <laughs> so... <laughs> it was a graveyard. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, this is this is the um, largest fashion mall in the world. The one by me. It's literally over two miles long. <laughs> this one is always pretty crowded because it's it's not just you know it's not just a mall, but it's a destination for for tourists. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. I have been meaning to visit the mall and just see what it's up to lately, but I just can't bring myself to do it. I went into a Sears last year. I, I felt, ah. felt like strange because I was mobbed by the employees. I was the only person in there. I had three people following me. I'm like, what can we help you with? I, all I asked were the gloves were. I, I had a, a, you know, just like a group of people following. And it's like, wow. Anyway, 
So <laughs> that's cool. Open source. Keep rocking. 2019 is going to yes. be a fantastic year for things. Yes. And yes. don't worry. I, I think we're going to see, you know, the Microsoft to GitHub thing. My, to Microsoft's credit, they haven't done anything stupid with it yet. So Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I definitely can see IBM and Red Hat just gelling. I don't think anybody yes. had a major problem with that outside of the initial reactionaries. Yeah. Yeah. The initial fear, you know, and then yeah. I think it's going to be fine. I, I think they're going to be, a, that's going to be a good partnership and it's only going to advance Linux, you know, being used. So I think it's wonderful. Good times. Okay. <laughs> Last but not least, and I'm going to do really, I really, this is called TLDR. This is a GitHub page <laughs> for it. I really wanted to go, well, man, let's just skip over it, but we're mm -hmm. not going to do that because we won't talk yeah. about Fast and interactive TLDR client. It's written in Go, which apparently is considered a feature. What is it? Um, it's kind of neat, man. I mean, it's community-driven uh, community man pages, basically, improve the smart user interaction. You can think of it as a really advanced autocomplete for the command line. It's helpful. I put it up, mm -hmm. played around with it. For things that, A, are just not worth Googling, or you just can't be arsed to type out. You're like, oh, I feel like typing all that out. I know how to do it. Also, it's very helpful for um, when you can't remember things. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're old <laughs> and you yeah. get off my lawn. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I used to know how to do this. This was a thing. But mm -hmm. I like it. Um, honestly, yeah. I, it's a good project. Mm -hmm. If you're the right person for it, go for it. I try not to use things. I try not to use uh, auto tab, tab complete because I feel like I'm being lazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or your arrows. <laughs> you know what? No, no, no. Because that, that at the speed when I just hold the up arrow for 30 seconds, I, I, yes. I'm, I'm working on pattern recognition because I can't, <laughs> yes. I can't read what's going yeah. by that fast, but I know what that blob link looks like. I'm like, oh, what? that was that FFMA command I needed. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that's definitely. The, we yeah. can rock and roll so with this it. Is, this is so much easier to use than going through the man pages. It's, it's again, it's autocomplete, has autocomplete search and, and all the goodness to make life easier through large man pages. <laughs> 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 all right. Uh, yeah. We're getting into the slice of pine, but we got to think a gang of people. Again, yes, special holiday sized gang of people. Yes. Uh, did we yes. get some new Patreons, did we? Yes, we do. Mila Gamer Linux in chat is our, our one of our newest patrons. And so his is Greg. Greg. Um, Greg. Greg <laughs> yeah, just dangerous. says Greg. You ever meet anybody named Greg? You know something's up. Uh oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Greg's here. And then uh you got some goodies on on the Amazon our Amazon wish zone Ven. <laughs> it is. That's the thing, man. Uh, we we got everybody straightened out, everybody fessed up to what they yes. got me up to. Um our Theron capture card, which is using on yes. this camera right here. We're gonna be using that for some live Yay. stuff. Um other than being pointed at me. It's gonna be pointed at interesting things in the future. And Aldeus uh was the one terabyte of terror, which is currently recording everything. That's yes. awesome. And the mystery HDMI cable, Bradley. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everyone yes. uh, shopping with our Amazon affiliate links. I know that's a oh, thing. Oh, yeah. So I blew up a couple of people this week because we're not the only ones. And it's an easy way for it doesn't cost you anything. Just boop. Hey, look, we get a little cut. But if you want to help our nonsense out, we got that support button. Where we dance and dance and dance and thank you, thank you, thank you. And oh mm -hmm. man, I got our site blown up crazy, don't know. We yeah. also have humble PayPal yeah. and magic internet money. So let's yes. get those lies apart. <laughs> Boom. Motion. Talk about yeah. A. All right, that's a good get for a project name. A. Yes. B. Yeah. Really hard to find on Google. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I've been using actually. I've I used Motion years ago when you know, this is like back in twenty twenty fifteen or something. Um, and actually, it's a really nice, lightweight yet capable application for operating surveillance cameras on Linux. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it works very, very well. Um, it works with with any Linux supported video camera, including all 
video for Linux webcams, many IP cameras, access cameras, and it controls pan and tilt functions as well. And it's actually much lighter than ZoneMinder, uh, which is which is really wonderful. And it's actually easier to configure. Well, and yeah, it has I mean, a local you host. You can put it know, on a really Pi awesome. Zero. Yeah, exactly. So this is a, a um, an article telling you how to how to set up a surveillance camera on Raspberry Pi Zero, and it goes in, in depth on you know how to install it, how to use how, how to uh, detect images in the in the video, and I believe he said he was going to be using the AWS AI mm -hmm. uh, for it later on, which is really really cool. He hasn't published that yet, but um, it's a street lamp. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's a street lamp. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really, really awesome that the Raspberry Pi is, you know, uh, Raspberry Pi Zero is powerful enough to do this. So that's really cool. <laughs> this is a really good thing. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is a good application for Raspberry Pi. But even if you just wanted to use yeah. the motion software, you can use that against yes. pre recorded video. Yeah. It doesn't have to be yeah, a live feed. You yeah, know, you like, can use that for anything. <laughs> find me all the picnic tables in this movie, but yeah, I'm really thinking about hacking one of these together for my um, pole cam, which I currently yeah. have my Ring Outdoor Secure one of them camera pointed at um, the line pole because I'm watching for AT and T to come and put up optic sheaths, and I don't want them to do it without mm. me seeing them, so I can run out there. I'm yeah, like, hook it up now, and. Um, that's really cool. That's really neat. I'm digging that. And that's a yeah. fun project too, because you can also train it. Yes. It could be like a little pet. Yeah. And I don't need <laughs> something like that in the house for the same reason I don't need a vacuum cleaner because I'll be feeding things to it intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds dangerous. Okay. Uh, contact. Yeah. We're going to get out of here, but we like to give everyone a chance to mm -hmm. scream back in our direction. This is a special holiday version of the contact segment. Not really. Yay. It is still <laughs> tap that button and you don't even have to prove you're smarter than the bot. Just let us know on the drop down menu, which show it is. Mm -hmm. We get a little bit of an email and we can spread it out amongst yes. us. Uh, mm -hmm. We do ask, don't send in something that's like, how do I Linux, bro? I know we're going to get six of those next week now that I've said that, but also drop us a line on YouTube or Twitter or better yet, Patreon. Just put it in the post under uh, the show. That'll mm -hmm. be brilliant. So, oh, that's why I had everything enlarged. Who do we have up first this week, Joe? Oh, well, this is Red Phoenix. And he's asking about two-factor off. Because we Too talked much? about it, remember? Yeah. Yes, and yes, we did. With yeah. the DNS and for uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Always, you always, you know, in today's world, you use two-factor auth or or more websites and and DNS servers. So, and his comment is too much effort, too much effort, and you introduce two points of failure, technical failure. That is, I rather use pa I'd rather use passwords with ninety bit. Uh, plus entropy. And yeah, he has a really, really good point. You know, you could <laughs> using really powerful <laughs> passwords does help. And, and I do on many of the sites that I don't use, uh, many places I don't use two factor auth. But it just seems like companies and websites really need that two factor <laughs> for obvious reasons. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Ben? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> You do you, mm -hmm. I do me. Uh, it's a pain. Absolutely, yeah. it's a pain. 100%. But it's a good habit to get into because 100%, yeah. if you do follow anything on quantum computing, passwords mm -hmm. are going to be a thing of the past in a decade. Yeah. You're talking about something yeah. anything can just chew through. And I don't know. I like that added bit of security. I'm, I don't two-factor all the things. Having a strong password is good. Hundred mm -hmm. percent. I'm not saying yes. what's your password. Well, it's potato, but it's two yeah. factor. It's probably not a good idea. <laughs> I mean, have something, yeah. but it is definitely safe. I know it's saved my Steam account. Yes, and yeah, same here. I had an issue with actually Google Plus. You know, where they've been talking, we've been talking about that with with uh, problems with uh, Google Plus security, and I got I got hit with that one about a year ago. Google Plus. And so I immediately set up two factor auth for my Google account. 
And now I, I set up two factor for everything, but I do also have very long passwords. Those help a lot too. <laughs> I know one, two, three. Yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Make sure to, to put that through a password generator. So you get a nice long string of characters and numbers and words. <laughs> like the core of a lot of my passwords. Here's a little t TMI it was like way back in the dial up days. Um, I had this upper and lower case, the good security back then. For dial-up login, mm -hmm. it was 16-digit alphanumeric, and they wouldn't let you change your password. It was whatever you were stuck with. Ah, uh, <laughs> Burned that's into one. my skull. So yes. it's always like yeah. the root plus some other stuff on top of that with two-factor. Like our Cloudflare. Yes. Um, if you try to log into Linux Gamecast Weekly, we have two-factor set up on that. And, of course, yeah. Steam. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Coming up next. Hey, look, it's a question. I'm yeah. Disruptino. I'm going to go with Disruptino. I think it's <laughs> Disruption Zero, I think. Disruptino it is. <laughs> Hello, LGC. Wife got me a shiny new Acer Swift 3 for the holidays, and it needs the Linux treatment. And Togos mm -hmm. and Fedora have issues with the Wi-Fi's and the NVIDIA's. Is there just work? Wait, hang on. Is there a just works distribution? For laptops, <laughs> Windows and, 10. Uh, no, no. I've actually had a little experience with the Acer Swift, not the the newest one, but mm -hmm. but older ones. And I found that that Linux Mint and Ubuntu worked beautifully on them. So, and and most people, I I, I checked other people' uh, issues with them, said that um, Ubuntu was a really good choice for the Acer Swift. So, because there were sometimes Wi-Fi issues and whatnot, but I, I never encountered that with ones that I've installed that on. I would so, say yeah. you're probably for, yeah, <laughs> begrudgingly, he says, Ubuntu, yeah. Yeah. You just want everything mm -hmm. to work for the most part out of the box. Yeah. But chill, it's and, no fun. I don't get to play with everything. I know, I know. But I also, I also love, I've had great success with Solaris on most of my laptops. And I've got about 10 different laptops that I've, I've tested the OSs on and, and other people's as well. So Solaris has, has seemed to work on a lot of laptops really well. So you can try that too. That's a, a wonderful distro. <laughs> the, uh, hmm. well, I, I would imagine something, you know, arch based would be good. Oh yeah, yeah. It's just getting the the probably the Wi Fi might have mm -hmm. an issue, so you have to install, you know, some drivers and whatnot. What about Pop OS? Do you think that might be an option? Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it's Ubuntu based, so <laughs> why not just go for like Debian? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Debian Classic would work. Yeah. Uh, sometimes with Debian, you do have to uh, set up Wi-Fi separately, but for the most part, the modern-based Debians work just like Ubuntu does. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, use what... You, <laughs> I, I think maybe the only advice I would say, is, uh, yeah, definitely put um, current Ubuntu on there. Then you'll know that whether or not everything works, like actual yeah. physically works, then go experiment. For, Dora yeah. for the most part's going to work. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Get those live CDs going and just put lots of different distros on live, live CDs. CDs? Or, uh, excuse me, live USBs. Live <laughs> I'm old. <CDs? laughs> wow. Live USBs. <laughs> no, man. Oh, good. This is what we need. Live tapes. Yeah. And in fact, that you know, that that's how um uh, <laughs> disruption zero <laughs> Dis disruptino. That's how I test all my equipment is I, I'm usually running um, a version of Ubuntu or um, Solus on a, a, a live USB and then boot with that and see if everything works uh, um, with the live and then install it after mm. everything. It's great. So that, that's, that's how we do it. <laughs> that's how it did. And it yeah. do. Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, we're going to bounce out of here. Thanks everyone for joining us. And, uh, how about mm -hmm. we... <laughs> ah, let's see if I hear the music soon. <laughs> I think no. I can. I think I can. <laughs> well, just because you said it like that, we're not going to have any music. Oh. <laughs> <Aww. laughs>
<laughs> All right. Well, I think I. <laughs> there we go. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Linux Gamecast original series. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> and and no, I'm not going to thank myself. <laughs> so and thank you, Chat Realm Dynamic. <laughs> you know, I, I just saw that Pedro typed. Solus finally got their summer together. I want to believe. I I want to oh, believe X Files cool. that that was autocorrect. But yeah. I know he's, it's like, you know, he's just hammered. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Thank you, chat room. We love you. You, Your support just means the world to us. And it's what keeps this network going. Network. So, Jill thinks two you, shows that now work. <laughs> no. More than that. We got the Friday Night Foo Bar. We have the... Uh, Jordan's Thursday stream. We have Jordan's. Pedro's uh, Jordan's Thursday switch stream. <laughs> yeah. And and we have Pedro's stream game stream on Tuesday. And every once in a while we have Game of Who. That's gonna be coming up soon for the the New Year's Eve special. So we have lots to offer here on <laughs> Linux Gamecast. Bye everyone. <laughs> okay. Bye everyone. Love you, chat realm. <laughs>